I've just got off a consulting call with someone in this audience and it's got my brain going and it's relating to the idea of becoming your own bank and I want to kind of get into the nuances of all of that, what that means to me, what I will be doing here and what it can mean for us moving forward in the future if our portfolios are worth a significant amount of money and we're wondering, you know, how to incorporate people into it, what what does it even mean to become a bank, all of that stuff. So if you're interested in learning more about these consultation calls, there's a link in the top line of the description to go and check it out. So the big concept for us is that when our portfolios increase in price and we have a larger portfolio to work with, we kind of just think we're just gonna become our own bank, right? We haven't really given much thought as to what it even means to be a bank. Even, do we, do we want to be a bank? Is that the way we want to operate? And so when I think about my portfolio and my portfolio going up, I think about what that will enable me to do. So the first thing that it will enable me to do is to collateralize my digital assets to get loans, collateralized loans. And then I'm able to spend those loans on cash flowing assets, which will always continue to generate cash flow even once the loan is paid back. That's one option. We've obviously talked about that at length. And I talk about this at length in these sessions too, with people in more detail with their specific personal circumstances. Then the other option is to basically get an interest yield on the assets by having them in, in someone else's custody. So we essentially getting paid to give custody of our digital assets. And this is also really interesting and something that we should all be considering. And still for me holds that kind of central point in my mind like this is going to be the main bulk of what i do with my xrp i will collateralize some and i'll invest that loan into cash flowing assets but then i'll also kind of have that interest being paid to me from having my xrp in the custody of another bank and so the topic that we talked about in the call was essentially you know my family my friends they don't really want to listen to me i've been telling them to buy xrp or digital assets and they just won't listen and my response to that typically is well if you're doing all that you can to kind of bring people in, it's not so much about the actual asset, I believe. It's more about the like the understanding that not everything we hear on the news is real, you know? <laughs> like there's an enlightening moment that often we have with XRP because of the problem that XRP solves and the rabbit holes required to get to that understanding. You kind of learn all of those things. Like if the news says something, we can't necessarily take that as gospel. And so my mentality towards kind of getting my friends and family involved are either I share all my information with them, I share everything I can, my enthusiasm, my attention, you know, everything. If they don't want to take that, that's fine, right? Because ultimately, I'm doing it all for everyone anyway. Like with my own money, the crypto I buy, the businesses I build, the wealth I create, I'm doing it all for them anyway, right? So regardless of whether they put their money in or not, they're gonna be fine if, if I make it through this, right? And so it kind of relieves that stress of us trying to reach to everyone, you know, get, get into it, get exposure to these digital assets. But really all that matters is that you are, or I am in my example, I grow my wealth, my portfolio goes crazy. And regardless, my family and friends are sorted, right? So I'm gonna do that as my kind of like big selfless act. And I suggest, you know, think about the ways that you can have that big selfless act um, when all this happens, right? And so that brings us into the part of the conversation where we start talking about becoming a bank, right? What does that even mean? And essentially, if we look at banking ultra simplistically, is that outside people give their money to the bank and the bank invest it. Um, what's really bad is that the bank give you returns that are not weighted in your contribution. So for example, you're getting 0.5% interest when you put money in the bank so that they can go out there and create 10 to 15%, right? They're not actually giving you a very valuable distribution there. And so when I think about becoming a bank, I don't necessarily want to operate like that. I would rather operate like a bank that's made for a collective of people. Um, and I think this is gonna be the way things maybe move in the future when there's a load of people who have some money, but maybe don't reach the accredited investor levels or don't quite reach those levels of wealth to where banks are reaching out to them saying, we'll pay you, we'll pay you to kind of give us your assets. There'll be a lot of people that don't reach that level. And as a result, I think pooling funds together in some capacity and creating some sort of liquidity pool and investing as a group um, to create cash flowing assets and then distributing interest 
earnings, dividends, whatever, among the group is probably going to be the best play, right? I've always joked about the idea of getting a group together of people just to go and buy like an NBA team or an NFL team or a football team here in the UK or, or in Spain. Like when we pool our funds together, the wealth becomes crazy. And I think if I'm getting anything out of all of this is that we probably need to do more things together as a community rather than kind of selfishly looking for our own way to make it on our own. And so this is what brings me into this kind of a business model thought process for family and friends, regardless of whether they invested right now or not. And it comes in the shape of this, right? You have a business structure, you have your trust at the top, you have your holding company right underneath, and then your companies underneath that, whether you've got a pre-existing company right now, or you want to have a digital asset holding company or a precious metal holding company, whatever you want to do, um, you have that structure in place. Once this wealth has occurred, you'd obviously set all of that up because I think it's better to do that after the wealth comes in rather than right now, because this is a wealth management strategy. If you have no wealth, maybe don't set all of that up, maybe just start a company and that's it. We can get into that into another video, but follow me along this uh, thought process, right? I've got my company structure set up and I've got a certain amount of money in the portfolio. Basically, that's what the holding company is worth, right? That the whole structure as a whole is worth X amount of dollars. Let's say my sister, for example, said, wow, that's really crazy how you've managed to do all of that. I'm really interested in what you do now. And I go, oh, right now <laughs> you're interested now, right? My sister's quite interested, so it's not the case for me. My whole family is basically. Um, but I know a lot of people will have those people reaching out to them uh, after all this happens and asking like what they can do. Um, and essentially, I think the best way to structure it for the for the well-being of families, this is just the way I view it, families and close friends is that you say, absolutely, fine. Hand all of the money that you want to invest, essentially, into my business. So they, they put their funds, they put their assets, whatever they have, into your business. And whatever the value is of their contribution to your portfolio, um, whatever their contribution is, they get that percentage back in uh, distributions, okay? So let's say my sister has 5% of what the portfolio is worth. You know, the portfolio is generating X amount of passive income from ca the cash flow assets, from the investments that you do, the properties you buy, the, you know, the interest that you're getting from your digital assets, all of that, you're adding funds to that pool so that that amount is actually even more. And they get, my sister would get in this situation, 5% of the overall company's earnings on the interest and that would be distributed to her. So the distribution is basically based on percentage of that company that she's contributed to. And to make that an actual feasible thing to do, all you would do is add, you would just add them as a director with 5% shares. And what you've got is in the end is when a company distributes their earnings, it distributes them among the directors according to their percentage allocated to the business. And so let's say we do that for my sister. I, I'm in there. There's, there's two people in this company now. Then you've got your mum and dad, maybe you've got brother. So now you've got five individuals in there with constant kind of ebbing and flowing of percentage shares that they hold. And it's only based on their contribution to the system. And then I think, okay, well, that's my family sorted, right? They're getting their distributions every so often, every whatever cadence you want. They're getting their distributions. They're not having to work anymore, right? Because they're just getting paid by my company. They're essentially employees of my company and they don't have to do any work. But then you think, okay, well, I've got, I've had a best friend for like 20 years. So maybe I add him and he gives me his capital. You get where I'm going with this? like you're turning into a bank. There'll be a time and place, if you've followed down this train of thought for long enough, there'll be a time where somebody you do not know comes to you and says, I've got a million pounds, can I put it with you? I want to create that cash flow for myself. And all of a sudden, you've not just become a bank, you've become an investment instrument, like yourself, your own company. Your company is now able to distribute loans, maybe, uh, via smart contracts in this new system. You'll be able to contribute cash flow to individuals and all you're doing is giving directorship or employee status to individuals within your company and distributing those interests that you're getting at the top level among all the people based on how much uh, capital they've injected into the system. You know, I don't know a crazy amount. I probably do know a crazy amount about banking more than more than most, I would say. It seems like a bank and it kind of feels like a bank, but something to do with the idea that it's family, friends and like a trusted group of people 
makes it feel better. And this is just kind of the, the stance I'm taking. So, you know, it's completely up to you whether you kind of start to view yourself as an investment vehicle for just your friends or just your family or your family and your friends or your family and friends and extra circle around. Um, but I think, you know, there's opportunity there to scale to the nth degree to where you become an asset manager of the assets that you hold and you distribute those who contribute capital to the system. Really interesting way of viewing it, I think. And, you know, after that call finished, you know, it was a very, it was very, very good uh, consulting call. And, you know, tremendous amounts of value kind of shared in there. And there's, there's so much to talk about. When something piques my interest like this, you know, I'll be, I'll come straight onto the channel to talk about it. And I love to get to talk to you guys one-on-one. -on -one. It's like really, really valuable to me. And I think it's probably my, my better uh, skill set is suited to like the one-on-one -on -one situation. Um, but you know, it's all good fun. If you enjoyed this video and you've got extra thoughts that you want to contribute to this conversation, uh, please let me know in the comments. And there's something really good that um, there's a there's a podcast called The Diary of a CEO. Um, I love that podcast. At the beginning of some of the episodes, he says, I hope you're not watching this, but if you are, keep it to yourself. And I think that's such a good way of putting something like this, like this concept that we're talking about here in this video, is really, really valuable. <laughs> like it's really important. Most people, 99% of people are not thinking about how they can uh, actually, with a, with an actual process, set up their families and friends and kind of sort them out. People look at that as a kind of a pipe dream, but we actually have, like in this video, for example, the plan to how to actually do it. I think that's super valuable. Please make sure you subscribe on your way out if you enjoyed it. Click like as well while you're there. The video below me right here is one that the algorithm thinks you would really, really like. So I suggest you go and watch that video. Let me know what you think in that one. Stay emotionless at all times here, guys, but I'll see you in the next one.